Hello and welcome to my tutorial for Revolution Under Siege, a game by Age Old Games which is known for producing hyper complicated war, war games and grand strategy, one of their most popular being American Civil War quite a few years ago. This, this game was <clears throat> has been out for a while but has only just been released on Steam, well not just, it was released two months ago. Um, I've had it for a while, it's a very difficult game to get to know. But I think I have all the co concepts down, so I'd like to make a video because there's pretty much nothing out there showing how to play this game. Now, I'm just going to be doing a scenario, which is just one of the smaller ones. It's a couple of features that is not present in, say, the Grand Campaign or the White Autumn Campaign, uh, such as... Well, I'll explain when I get in there. I'm just going to do the Polish-Soviet War Scenario. And I'll play as the Poles. Okay. First off, let's try and go through everything that we see on the screen. Um, yes. Alright, now, your basic map. Um, everything dark, typical fog of war. Over here is your map filters where you have military control and yada yada yada. It has all the tooltips there, nothing special. The most important thing you, on the screen is the ledger, which you can open up several tabs using the F buttons. This is one. Of, this is probably the first one that you want to get them to know. This is your first. This is the force listing button and shows all the forces you have available, um, designated by rank. And all these up here, more tooltips. You click on it, and it should take you to the locate. Mm, excuse me, the location, wherever the hell they are. Um, fourth army. Yep, there's the fourth army. Next is your reinforcements. Basically, when you lose your lose forces, you can. Click on one of these, depending on the unit type, and it should automatically send reinforcements to the battalion or group that needs it the most. I'm not 100% sure on this, so I have to read about that. The manual is a bit vague. Next is your mobilizations. Um, since this is just a scenario, um, it will say no historical options available. Regional decisions, again, you won't need to use this because... Oh, yes, this is in relation to engagement points, but I'll get on that later. Objectives and scores, okay. <clears throat> now, um, up here it shows you the date and what will happen, your capital, national morale, the victory points, and the engagement points, which is up here. This is your objectives list, which it shows you how many victory points you gain per turn and the objectives that you will need to take. All of us, we are the Polish, and these are the objectives here. Now, scenario background shows the basic scenario. Essentially, in this scenario, the, um, the Reds just want to take over Poland because, you know, they're communists and they just want to take over take over the Polish, but that didn't work out that well. Basically, our objective is to hold off Warsaw and take the southern take the southern states. Um, different, because they're going to each turn. Yes, so essentially I've played this scenario a few times before, so basically we want to, want to hold on to Warsaw because the main enemy will be coming from here and try to take on down the his take down the there. Historically, the Polish managed to sweep. I mean, the Reds managed to sweep all the way down here, but they got stuck at Warsaw. They could never actually take it. This was an operational failure for them be because since they couldn't take Warsaw, eventually the Treaty of Riga was enacted, and the war ended with a Red loss. Now. Alright, now, up here, we have our national morale. Um, but basically, if you lose cities and <clears throat> soldiers and such, you lose national morale. And this affects the loyalty of your regions and how popular you are. <clears throat> um, it also affects... yeah, you can see the tooltip, it's pretty basic. 
victory points again. All right, thousand rubles and conscripts. Essentially, this is uh, your rubles are used to do um, do reasonable decisions and do building. Um, you can use that to enter the building mode, but I don't think. Oh, look at that! You can produce building um, units in here. Can I? Oh well, I'll have to. Yeah. All right. Okay, looks like I can build them there. Build units. Um, takes 30 days, so that means it would take two turns, because each turn in this game is 15 days. Requires industry to build. Okay, then. And you can just cycle through there. I did not know that. Interesting. Strategic Atlas, that's nothing. Alright. Railroad transport capacity. This is in relation to movement, but I'll get to that when I talk about how to move units. Let's click out of that. Alright, now let's get into the ugly bit. This is this is where it gets more complicated. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about um, unit and force structures. Now, beginning from the very bottom, you have what is called elements. Elements are these four. Um, each one here is an element, and a whole element forms a regiment. So this is the regiment caval first cavalry grade, consisting of four three cavalry elements and one horse artillery battery. Next up is the division. A division is a regiment that has a leader attached to it. A uh, leader. Um, can basically look up. Oh, whoops! Where'd it go? Yes, this is our leader. You can look at his stats up here. He, his strategic and offensive and defensive ratings. You can look that up in the manual. It's not that important right now. Um, let's see. Over here, you have your eleven units and the estimated combat power. Um, let's see what else. Oh yes, these two bars here are Strength and Cohesion, but I can't remember which is which right now. These is This is also your um, special abilities, you can hover your tooltip over them to see which one is which. Next up is the Core, Army Core level now, let's see, um, where's a good Core? I don't know, that may be a core, I don't freaking know. Yep, this is a core. Um, which is indicated by this little diamond si diamond symbol up there. A core, essentially, is a whole set of these units, a whole bunch of divisions at a maximum of nine, if I recall correctly, um, led by a two or a three star general. Now, these star general relates to how many command points is is available for you. If you lose, if you, if the amount of generals don't weigh up to the amount of command points that are required, such as bottom, this stack has 24 command points, which is given by all the generals in that. So that means I can take out a unit there, a general unit there, and give it to someone else who doesn't have enough command points for a fully operating force. If your force does not have enough command points to operate full efficiency, you'll get a little flashing number here that will be in red, which relates to your... Oh, I think there's a... Yep, this one does not have enough command points. It needs a hell of a lot more to operate decently, so it's got a massive 35% penalty, which means that, that, it has, that its movement is affected by... Th movement and attack is affected by 35%. <clears throat> Next up, you have your General Army HQ, which is your big boss. Over here, you can see its command radius, but we can't move, them, move him up right now because he is locked. There are a whole list of bonuses that you can read about in the manual that they confer. For instance, if a command unit is in relation to a core... Um, that's a core, yes? Dismiss core... Yes, um, I don't know. It's a very, very strange system. You might have to read about that in the manual. It's fairly well explained, but every unit here 
that is flashing in red means that it is connected to this thing. Ah, yes, these are all armies, none of them are cores. If a core is over here, then that means that the army will be able to provide support based on its distance. Yep, there you go, it can provide support there by holding down the shift key. Alright, now let's talk about supply. Uh, I'm sure, areas, population. Over here we can see how where supply is able to go through. I think it's dependent on your territories. Oh yes, I think these flashing ones here are supply. Yes, I think over here this is where supply is done. Now, if a unit is going into enemy territory, it will eventually run out of food and ammunition, unless it has one of these. Um, hang on. Oh yeah, look at that, food and ammunition. Basically, this gives a stockpile, but this will eventually run out, so you have to send this unit with a contingent, a guarding contingent back, to stock up and then come back to give it before attrition starts taking hold. Now, what else? What else can I talk about? Uh, the game is in 15 days, and it's not by turn. Both, both players plot their moves, and then they press the end turn, and then they're executed simultaneously. Oh yes, let's look at movement now. There are several movement orders you can use. The first is to enter a structure which gives it a garrison bonus. You simply click on that and then move it. I think he'll enter, the t enter it in the next turn, or... I don't know. Next is Force March, which allows an army and its core to move at um, all their units simultaneously, which results in slower movement and more cohesion. Force March means more movement points, but they will lose cohesion. Move by rail. Now, this is where this comes into effect. <clears throat> Your railroad transport capacity essentially tells you how many trains you can use in one given turn. So if I was to move this over here, there you go. I just lost a whole bunch of command points. Oh, to, if you want to move a unit back, you simply move it back to its original location. There you go, 300 command points back. Synchronized movement, evade combat, pretty simple. Over here is your command structure. Um, basically allows you to form up your core and your army, but I don't think I want to change anything right now because I can't think of anything to do. Over here are special orders which allow you to destroy rails, set up an ambush, yada yada yada, pretty simple. Um, Ah, now, stances. This is quite interesting. You have four original stances. You have Assault, Offensive, Defensive, and Passive. Basically, this means... Yeah, there's a tooltip here. The tooltip's at the top, shot top to show you what each one means. Because offen the offensive postures have four sub-postures, and defensive as well. You can read about each of them because there are tooltips there. It's Pretty simple. Can't need to explain that. It's a good thing about this game because it has so many tooltips available. Now, let's do a couple turns. I don't want to do too many because there's not much point. You can probably hear my birds squawking. Sorry about that. Now, game plan. Simple. Guard this because we don't want them to take mints or Warsaw or Lods or any of that. But if we go over across here and capture. Odessa, Kiev, um, Yekaterinsov, Rostov, and Kharkov, they will lose a hell of a lot of national morale and victory points, which will allow us to hold on to this much more easily. Now, what was the... Yep, there you go. It's basically a defensive up here and an offensive down here. Now, what we have available, let's turn off the filters. Second tank battalion has, I don't like leaving them alone because, well, let's see if we can, no, we can't form them up there. How much? 21 to operate, there's, ah, 
I don't know how many command points. Ah, uh, command costs two, command costs two. Each one has. requires two. So I could move. one tank battalion into there. So let's see if I can't do that. Can I do that? Yes, I can. I can merge him in there. But let's move him up for now because I want to start getting the offensive. That'll take 18 days. Let's not do that. Let's see if this will. Oh, shit. Move back. 16 days. Well, either way. What the hell? Does it make a difference? I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, it's because there's no free... No, oh, there is a rail. I don't know. Either way. Um... Let's move the second army up here to take Kiev. And the third army up here as well. I want a full on Blitzkrieg this bitch. Let's move the fourth tank company up here. We'll keep these guys. No, they can't move because they're locked. And I also want to move my air bases because they can operate in a certain. Uh, yeah, they can that they can provide support. Now, I can't use that because I ran out of capacity. You know what? There's no point to using rail for him because either way, it's going to take 16 days. So, where's my strike group? Oh, strike group. I don't. Oh, one thing I don't like about this, it gets so cluttered with these freaking lines everywhere. Let's move him up there. 13 days, he can provide support. We'll move the strike group over here. Now, oh, it doesn't make a difference. Either way. Now, let's form up our defense. Let's move the... 7th Army up to Minsk, put them on a hold it. Yep, standard defense rules. Let's move the northeast front there. We'll keep him there for now. I wonder if there's any more generals I have, because I don't like. I don't think I have any more generals available. No, I don't. Let's just form up fronts for now. 5%, 5%. Oh, it's locked. Is he locked? Yeah, I'll keep them there for now and just see how it goes. Alright, screw it. I'm happy with this for now. It's not that important to um, do this perfectly, because I'm really I'm just showing, trying to show a very general guide of how to play this game, because there's really nothing out there in terms of guides. <clears throat> oh, fuck. Oh, no. No. That's a horrible start. Oh well, I took... I now have Kiev. Well, not yet. Um... Hang on, just wait. There we go. Ah, um, uh, yes, you have your... Thing there. What's this? That's my tank company. Oh, you know what? I should just... Let him go over there. Yeah. There's nobody there, so I'll let the take company take that. Strike group is about to get royally buggered. Uh, militia. Cavalry reserve. May have to move them up. Can't move anyone up. Fuck you. Yeah, they seriously need a more defensive. Oh, crap. That sucks. Nah. 
Alright, to take a place you basically have to keep your soldiers in one place, in one spot, for a long time. Yeah, which is showed by military control, which is 94%, so I just have to hold that for a while. When these guys get over there, I will want I will move the these guys up and we'll continue the assault. Now let's look it up here. No, oh shit, what else? Alright, I don't like what you're doing, so I'll say an offensive posture and take you out. Let's move up the cavalry reserves. Mm. They're about to get wrecked. So, you know what? Retreat. Screw it. Run away. Now, I probably should have moved them up since they're going to be going over there. Wasn't my smartest move. Oh, if that was just you. I'll go through a more detail to get a battle manual in a little bit. <sighs> Crap, they were never able to take a death up, but that's not important because that's not my objective. Alright, two, so two things over there, so I'll move. You know what? I'll transfer the supply over there because they need it more. Wait, can't, can I? Move over there. There we go. Alright, third army. Let's begin our s wait. No, 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 no. Go back. Forty-four days. Well, let's just move over there for now and keep them there in a posture. Um, yep, I'm happy with that for now. Uh, the, yep, I'm gonna have to move them up. An offensive posture. Four days. Ugh, they're gonna capture it, aren't they? I left a freaking gap. Normally, I would think it through a lot more, but... There we go. Battle of Borisov. Yes! Oh, beautiful. Uh, you can see all your bonuses along here. You can go to a more detailed report. There we go, this is now under 96% control. They are about to move there in 18 days. This one will take three more days, so let's see if we can't move them up there. 14. Okay, that's good enough for now. Alrighty. The reserve army. Oh, look at that, a whole bunch of generals I could send. Actually, how much? Nine. No, I can't. Put them on the offensive. French military advisors. Alright. What's this? Oh, shit. You know what? Retreat. Retreat. Get out. Get out. Get out.
I'm just gonna wait till I capture um uh, the city up there, and then I'll probably stop. And they have Warsaw. Fuck. I'm really bad at this game, but whatever. Kharkov and take a currency. And they're gonna take. What's that? That was also Minsk. Move up, kill him, move up, kill him. What's that? Oh, Lithuanian army. Get back to Warsaw now. No, no, no that's all I want. Reserve army, go up there. Merge. Yeah, I'm. I'm probably fucked already. I'm very talented at screwing myself. I should have built more units. That's what I should have done. Siege artillery. Ooh. Someone has a regiment. Surely. Alright, let's just build a bunch here because. Oh. Just build a bunch of units because why the fuck not? Mm. There we go. Let's see how that goes. As I said, I suck at this, but I would take more time when I'm just playing normally. Mm. There we go, I got Mince back. But the massive army is coming down for Belovichny. Let's see, do I have your currents of yet? No, I don't. All out, kill them all, I don't care. They have that. These guys are gonna have to. Let's see. Oh, yep, more officers. The Lithuanian army, reserve army. Let's. Yeah, let's see if I can't take some. Take a couple out. I'll move the officers by train down here because they need some help. I should have totally tried to um, reorganize my forces a bit more at the start and build some units at the front, or maybe up there, so that way they can keep repelling some of the uh, invading armies. I would highly suggest, well, obviously I'm not taking my time, but I would really highly suggest taking your time, looking at the days that it takes to move units, because really I'm just sort of doing this ass randomly. Alright, they have Kiev back. And they're fucking with me at Sepastopol, I'm getting destroyed over there. Well, at least your current sort of seems to be slowly being taken. Uh, it's uh, loyalty reds. What's military control at 59%? Uh, that's at 55%. Hang on, what the hell? Oh, shit. They're out of food and water. Ah, oh, yeah, they're out of supply. God damn it. 
Wait, they shouldn't be out of supply. I can still pass through. Should it? Seventh army, fourth army. Go, kill him. We survive a sick. I should have moved them back. Ah well. You know, I'll maybe in the next few days I'll do a tutorial. Uh, a thing where I go into uh, into a hell of a lot more depth, but really this is just a kind of basic load of bullshit. Mm -hmm. oh, I love the music for this game. I mean, they haven't taken um, Warsaw yet, which is really all I can ask for at this point, considering I'm not fo totally focused on it. Come on, storm the fucking thing. I want it already. Die, Tiv Minier. I don't know why it's taking so long for me to fucking control a place. I've been in there for god knows how many turns. Where was that? Okay, they're in the slab. Oh no, Kharkov, come on, come on, come on, fuck! That's because they're our supply. There's Paravichny. There's all that. Oh no, 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 oh, you're fucked, you're fucked. I am so burned! <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Alright, you know what, yeah, I'll I'll just stop this now because Yeah, it's obviously that there's not much point continuing because I fucked it up beyond comprehension, but hopefully, hopefully, you learned in my shitty playthrough well not playthrough that how to play this game. Uh yeah. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment for any critique or whatever. Peace out.